WrestleMania 34. Was it a good pay-per-view? Was it a bad pay-per-view? Well, one thing's for sure. It was very, very disappointing. I don't even know what to say about this pay-per-view. The first half of the show was just amazing. I was tweeting that if you still complain about this pay-per-view, you are a goddamn idiot. I was hyping this pay-per-view up. I was thinking it's going to be the greatest pay-per-view of all time. And then it blew into my face. We got a 10-year-old as a Raw Tag Team fucking champion. Youngest WWE champions of all time. Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Paige, and um, Nicole, N N Nicholas. <sighs> First thing I want to say is that, yes, we like unpredictability. I think that's one of the most important things in wrestling. But it's good to have unpredictability. It's awesome. You know what's not awesome? When you make every fucking single match like that. None of these results, most of these results, didn't make any sense. They tried way too much to create this shocker. And just like I've said, it's cool to have some of these unpredictable moments, but when every single match is like that, it just sucks dick. It's one of these Dolph Ziggler moments when we had at uh, Fastlane, whatever the pay-per-view was. You, you think he's not gonna win, he's gonna be here just to get pinned. Well, Dolph Ziggler wins the championship just for the shocker. He's not gonna be the United States Championship the champion the next day. This was the whole pay-per-view. You think Roman Reigns is gonna win? No. You think Shansky Nakamura is gonna win? No. You think that Asuka is gonna win? No. Pretty much most of these matches ended like that. Anyways guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to WrestleMania 34 review. So this WrestleMania just pretty much proved to me that no matter how good the card is, no matter how promising it looks, they can still find a way to ruin the goddamn paper because welcome to the WWE. So much forced shit, so much forced positivity. And I was not a fan of that. Just like I've said, the first half of the show was kind of good. Then it blew into our fucking faces. Most of the surprises were ruined. And people might think, well, The Undertaker returned to the WWE. You probably hate the fact that he wrestled two minutes. No, I like that. I think that was pretty much... That was okay. I actually enjoyed that. Because that kind that tells a story. John Cena tried to get The Undertaker into the ring. The Undertaker comes out, shuts John Cena up. Most of the people kicked out of two, three, four Tombstone Pilot drivers. John Cena didn't kick out once. The Undertaker returns to the WWE after these, all these losses being better than ever before. That's the story they're trying to, trying to tell and uh, he looks amazing by the way. He looks like five, six years younger. He looks like, like at WrestleMania 20, like eight or something. That was just, that blew my mind honestly. And that whole segment was unbelievable. But let's start with the beginning of the pay-per-view. So we got under the giant mortal battle royal at the pre-show, which somehow is a different is different than the kickoff show. These are separate things. So pre-show had Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. If that doesn't tell you that Memorial Battle Royal is just a waste of time, it doesn't mean shit. Well, there it is. Anyway, the winner of this was Matt Hardy, which I think makes a lot of sense. We got Bray Wyatt returning and actually helping Matt Hardy to win this match, eliminating Baron Corbin. So that's a cool moment. Matt Hardy is a, uh, Bray Wyatt is a babyface right now. He joins Matt Hardy. I think that is very good, and I cannot wait to see what they are actually going to do with this whole rivalry. I want to see them as tag team champions. By the way, I think that would be really, really, really interesting to have this crazy people in the tag team division and I would absolutely love it. Hopefully that will happen because the current tag team division in Raw doesn't look promising. Does it 10 year old uh, Nicholas? Does it? Does it look? No. Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali on the kickoff show. Now that actually deserved to be on the main show because that was a very very good match and uh, Honestly, better than Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. We will get to that later, so make sure to keep this, keep watching this video because the thing that I'm, things I'm going to say about AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura will make you hate me probably. But I'm gonna tell you that because that's how I feel, and if you disagree with that, it's perfectly fine. We are we're all people. We can have a conversation. Great match, fast paced, great maneuvers. Crowd was into it, so. Cedric Alexander, Cedric Alexander wins the Cruiserweight Championship, right man won, uh, he hugged uh, Mustafa Ali at the end of the match, kissing him on his forehead, yeah, I, I like that. And we got Drave Maverick actually, I think crying as well, celebrating, and I think that is a very, very great thing for the Cruiserweight division, kinda reviving the whole division, and uh, you know, after all this Enzo shit, this whole, it, it was bad. Women's Battle Royal. 
I really didn't like the fact that all the women were like, we are NXT, like it's some kind of faction. No, it's every woman for herself and of course they got eliminated. At the end of the match, we got Bailey and Sasha Banks. They kind of wanted to shake hands, but Bailey used this advantage and eliminated Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks was very, very mad about that. However, it turns out Naomi was never eliminated. Naomi throws Bailey out of the ring. We have Naomi as the women's battle royal winner, which I think is a very, very good decision. Kind of a shocker and no Sasha and Bailey don't need to win this uh, we got this great shot of Sasha Banks looking very 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 pissed at the uh, Bailey and I think this rivalry is going to be pretty sick let's jump into the main show we got Seth Rollins versus The Miz versus Gay Balor for the Intercontinental Championship yes uh, here's the thing I want to say it's perfectly fine uh, to kind of empower, you know, equality, LGBT community that Finn Balor is doing, you know, Finn Balor, F Balor Club is for everyone, you know what that means. Uh, t-shirt, logo with the rainbow winning t-shirt, I'm all for it, whatever, go for it. When you make your whole attire as your fucking rainbow, and you have your entrance with a lot of LGBT people, that's just a, bit, a little bit forced, I don't, I don't get that. Is that his gimmick right now? I... I, I, am I the only one who doesn't see how it makes sense? I'm all for it, yes, do it, but there are different ways to do it. Dressing up Finn Balor was supposed to be the biggest fucking badass uh, in colors of rainbows. I don't see how that is supposed to get the guy over. You know, it's, it's a bit cringy, if I'm being honest. It's a bit cringy, and uh, I asked you a question. Who would win, Demon Balor or Gay Balor? We got Seth Rollins' cool entrance with blue eyes and of course The Miz with a very weird attire but it looked kinda good and he also had Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas and he pretty much said I got this on my own. Kinda seemed like a babyface Miz for some reason and yes I would love to see him as a babyface, I just don't think it would work. Of course a great way to open up a pay-per-view, fast paced match, triple threat. Uh, every man was good in this match. The way he did coup de gras on top of two people or the way he did the blackout uh, curb stomp on two people like Seth Rollins, that was unbelievable. I think the right man won, which was Seth Rollins. title looks great on him and I think the prestige is going to be even higher with Seth Rollins having the championship because he's a babyface, he's a workhorse and that's what the Intercontinental Championship is all about in my opinion. So that wasn't a bad part of the show and th that was one of the reasons why I said this could be the greatest pay of all time because yeah we're going into the right direction right even the, even the match that I never thought is going to be good was probably the best match which I'm going to talk about later but let's move on to the women's match Charlotte versus Asuka for the women's championship for the streak as well and in a very big shocker in a very good match Charlotte actually defeated Asuka and her streak we got a lot of people doing this face and it seems like it's it was done only for one reason New Orleans, this is where the streaks are broken. And yes, I don't agree with the fact that you break a streak so early because on the main roster, this, the Asuka streak is shit. It doesn't mean anything. Seriously, it doesn't mean a dime. It doesn't mean a shit because she was on the main roster for a couple of months. I think at WrestleMania 35 or 6 would have been much more appropriate. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to be one of these storylines where I had my streak. I don't have it anymore, but I'm going to be even stronger right now and kick everybody's asses. And it opens, opens a lot more opportunities for rivalries because when you have that streak, it kind of limits a lot of shit. You know, because I can't lose. She can't cash in because the streak is right here. All of that sorts of crap. I don't really agree with the decision that Carmella didn't cash in. If Charlotte is winning, that why not do a cash in? You know, one great moment. And I think it's gonna be on SmackDown the next day, tomorrow. So just like I said, even though I don't really agree with the fact that you break the streak, I kind of feel like she doesn't really need it. Both women are great, uh, Asuka is an amazing wrestler, and she will do just fine without the streak. Then we got Fatal 4 match for the United States Championship. Jinder Mahal versus Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode versus Rusev. Of course, people were behind Rusev. Of course, they were. But <sighs> Jinder Mahal won the championship as expected. And I wasn't really mad about that. WrestleMania is about, about highs and lows. Sometimes you need these lows. And that was one of these lows. And I think that was a pretty nice decision. He pinned Rusev to get more heat. And he's supposed to be a heel, so I'm not really mad about that. Of course, I would prefer Rusev to win the championship, but Jinder Mahal won. Was it a good match? Hmm, you know, just 
It, it was what it was. And by the way, I forgot to mention, John Cena was in the crowd, drinking beer, taking photos with fans, and that was just amazing. After one of these matches, referee actually came up to John Cena, pretty much said he's here, and John Cena just ran through the ramp, and uh, later we got John Cena's entrance. Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey defeated Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Now this is a shocker, but I think that was the best match of the night. That was the best thing of the night. Ronda Rousey is better than we all expected. Kurt Angle is still has it. Triple H is amazing as always. The only thing I kinda disliked about this match, which I think is a very, very big deal, Stephanie McMahon looked way too strong way too strong the way she pretty much just beat the shit out of ronda rousey didn't make any sense to me you know ronda rousey nearly yes she, she beat the shit out of triple h but St but Stephanie mcmahon could beat the shit out of ronda rousey yes there were some cheap tactics but at the same time like you know it kind of felt a little too long for her to be in uh, control other than that, great match, great moments, Kurt Angle actually doing an angle lock on Stephanie McMahon, that was one of the best things I've ever seen. Triple H trying to do a pedigree, which I actually like. It had this a little bit of attitude, which I actually appreciated. Ronda is great, Angle is great, they won the match with Ronda Rousey submitting Stephanie McMahon. The Bludgeon Brothers defeated The Usos and The New Day. So The Usos lost their tag team championships, we got a very cool entrance from The New Day with midgets doing warm and stuff, pancakes and shit, that was, that was neat, and they have these graphics, uh, which only we see on television, like 3D graphics, I thought they are real, some of them looked very good, some of them looked silly, so I'm not quite sure if I like them, I don't think it's necessary, to me it just screams, we don't have the budget to do real shit, you know, honestly, it looks like a Snapchat filter or something, so, sometimes it looked good, sometimes it bad, in this instance, it looked pretty, pretty Nice. Now the match was uh, a little bit underwhelming. Yes, we got the, the Bludgeon Brothers as champions, but at the same time it was just short. It was just, you know, a squash match pretty much. Very, very, very short. It was it, it was what it was. I kind of feel bad that the Usos have been waiting to be on the main uh, card of WrestleMania, and that's all that they got, so, you know, but... It was what it was. Then we got John Cena coming out of the ring, pretty much waiting for The Undertaker. Let's go out. Undertaker is here. No, it's Elias. And I was like, no, please. No. Please. Elias is singing pretty much. Elias is singing pretty much saying that you expected something more. John Cena beats the shit out of Elias. He's trying to walk out of the ring. He's near the stage and lights go out. And we have this perfect shot of the ring. And there's his hat, gloves, everything that The Undertaker left at WrestleMania 33. And it just explodes with lightning. You know, by lightning. And there's no head, there's nothing in the ring anymore. Then we hear the music, Undertaker comes out looking better than, I don't know, seriously. He looked terrible at WrestleMania 33, he looked out of shape, he looked tired, he, he wasn't really moving well, he looked amazing right here. He was in shape, he, his face looked better, I don't know what the fuck happened to the Undertaker, but he looked healthy as fuck. And we had this match, very short, over two minutes. You know, under three minute match with Undertaker just beating the shit out of John Cena, doing running, that was very fast, like a cruiserweight match. <laughs> I was honestly like, go get it old man. John Cena does a back suplex and he's trying to do you can't see me, he's running and the Undertaker of course sits up, John Cena is scared as shit and we got chokeslam, tombstone power driver, one, two, three, Undertaker wins in a very shocking fashion. At first I was mad, don't get me wrong, at first I was mad, but then I was like, this is a perfect story, you know? This is a perfect story. Don't call, don't call out The Undertaker once he decided to retire. Just don't do it, he's gonna whip your ass. And that's exactly what happened to John Cena of, out of all people, you know? I think it was a perfect moment. Maybe it's going to set up WrestleMania 35 career versus career, you know? I can see that happening. But uh, even if it doesn't, I'm perfectly fine with that. Honestly, Ronda Rousey's shit and this match was the highlight of the show for me. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon vs Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens attacked them from behind. So, so the doctors were near Daniel Bryan. They tried to actually get him out of the ring. Of course, Shane McMahon is wrestling on his own. But in the middle of the match, Daniel Bryan actually returned, tagged and pretty much did what he does best. It doesn't seem like he lost a step. However, I was really, really concerned at one part. I think most of you guys catched it. Where he did this move, uh, double drop kick or something like that. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Where we basically do a drop kick from the top rope and you land on your back. He landed on his back and he was just laying right here. 
for like five, six seconds. And I was like, holy shit, something bad happened. Then he just does this Shawn Michaels shit and he keeps on wrestling. And I was happy, probably nothing happened. Maybe it was just kind of trolling the fans. Hopefully it was. Of course, they win the match by Sami Zayn submitting to the Yes Lock, celebrating it, hugging with Shane McMahon. Very, very cool moment. And right after this is where the show started to suck. AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura. I want to say that AJ Styles vs Brock Lesnar was a way better match than this. If AJ Styles can have a good match with Jinder Mahal, if AJ Styles can have an amazing match with Brock Lesnar, <sighs> makes me think, is Shinsuke Nakamura overrated as fuck or what the fuck just happened during this match? Because that was a terrible match. You know, it, it wouldn't be a terrible match for like SmackDown Raw, but for WrestleMania it was so underwhelming. There was no story told. There was not. It was just a move after move after move. No, no story was told during this match. I expected them to start the match with pretty much beating the shit out of each other. And I think one thing that was missing is more fast-paced stuff. This match didn't do it for me. I tweeted it and I got so many replies pretty much saying that I thought I'm the only one who was feeling that. Lots of people were complaining that this match is just shit. I feel bad for saying that, but it was actually a terrible match. It makes me feel like Shinsuke Nakamura is all character and all charisma, but when it comes to the ring, maybe he's not that good. It's certainly not AJ Styles' fault. AJ Styles had a good match against Jinder Mahal. Shinsuke Nakamura, on the other hand, didn't have a good match with Jinder Mahal. You know? So I'm not quite sure, I'm pretty confused, I'm just gonna wait and see what actually happens next. AJ Styles won the match with a cool ending. The ending sequence was pretty good, the whole match was boring and the crowd was dead. Uh, at the end of the match we had we got a cool moment with Shinsuke Nakamura proposing to AJ Styles pretty much giving him the title and into the, into the balls. I seen it coming uh, and uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about Shinsuke Nakamura as a heel but he certainly needed a character change. I wasn't really buying this knee to face, you know. Hopefully it will be better and I actually am more exciting about this rider than I was before WrestleMania because there's something to fight for right now. Uh, the match was underwhelming, I'm sorry guys, I just gotta tell you the truth how I feel about that. Alexa Bliss vs Nia Jax for the Women's Championship. Nia Jax wins, great moment, the moment was amazing but the match was just, you know, it, it was what it was. The ending was cool though, a Samoan drop from the second rope. Cool. I, I don't know. Just like I said, the second part of the show was just like, yeah, okay. Cesaro and Sheamus versus Braun Strowman and Mystery Partner for the Tag Team Championship. Now, this was just a fart in the church. That was terrible. Braun Strowman comes out, uh, you wanna see my partner? He's not anyone in the back. That makes me feel like, okay, Rey Mysterio, Batista, James Ellsworth, I don't know, The Rock, who cares? It's gonna be someone returning to the company, right? I cannot wait. It's somebody in the crowd, and I was like, oh, shoot. Oh, sh not here. Don't go here. Don't go here. Nobody is going to like that. Turns out it's going to be a 10-year-old. This is some WCW 2001 shit. This is some David Arquette winning the WCW title shit. I don't know how can you actually enjoy it. It's funny. It's funny, but at the same time, what does that tell you about the tag team championships? They're worthless. You know, I can make a title out of paper that will be more prestigious than this shit. And at the same time, it kind of ruins Braun Strowman's character, in my opinion. I could see this shit happening from the big show. Braun Strowman, I, I, I really... no. I, I know. Just, just no. And I was watching this whole match and I was thinking like, okay, <laughs> this is a good gag, who's the real partner? Hey, who's the real part? Is that no? Don't don't tell me, Nicholas. Really, a ten-year-old is the tag team champion. I don't know. That just ruined the show for me. And then we got this boring ass Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns match. Okay, for the Universal Championship, and here's what I gotta say about this match. Of course, it was brutal. It was all of that sort of crap. But nobody cared. We got chance like this is awful. CM Punk boring and that pretty much tells you that no Roman Reigns will never get over as a babyface never 
I liked that he was bleeding and all of that sorts of crap, cool image, but at the end of the day, didn't really do it for me at all. Just the fact that Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, only got one fucking F5, never kicked out, 1, 2, 3, loses the match. Roman Reigns kicked out of 5 or 6 or 7, I'm not quite sure, but at least 5, like, I remember counting at 5. 5 fucking F5s. Are you serious right now? So Roman Reigns is stronger than five or four Braun Strowmans. Get the fuck out of this with this shit. Seriously? Holy crap. And, and Vince McMahon was like, ah, they're gonna love this because we are gonna swerve them. Roman Reigns is not gonna win the championship. Uh, Brock Lesnar is gonna win the championship. And it was like, oh, Lesnar won. I guess... Buy it for the Universal Championship. I was really rooting for Roman Reigns because I want to see the fucking Universal Championship on Monday Night Raw. So that was even worse for me, you know. That sh I don't know. Just this whole pay per view. Just first first hour was amazing. Then it just blew into our faces, and uh, I don't know how to feel about this pay per view. Just like I've said, I really, I really don't know. I'm I'm very disappointed. So I just cannot wait to see what kind of rivalries we are going to get. Um, I cannot wait to, to see the Superstar shake-up. I want to see the new rosters, new sh new shit pretty much because I really got tired of this whole Reigns, Lesnar, all of that sorts of crap. And if you're telling me that WrestleMania 35 are going to have Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar uh, part 3 where Roman Reigns wins, holy shit, no. No. Ugh. Anyways, I would give this pay-per-view 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10, because ending really matters. Ending and the beginning of the pay-per-view is always the most important uh, important part, and they ruined it. Half of the show was good, half of the show was terrible. So I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. Let me know in the comments below your rating for the show. Of course, your opinion can be different. It can, it can be the perfect WrestleMania for you. It's your opinion. It doesn't matter. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below your favorite match of the show. And as always, the great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.